If you happy and you know, say amen. 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 Are you looking at me? If you happy and you know, and you really want to show, if you happy and you know, say amen. 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 May God bless all of us in the name of Jesus. Amen. amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some people have already sat down. Those people, they have to see me at the end of the service. Somebody shout a bigger hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. All the time. All the time. Let us quickly open, you know what we do, the book of Galatians. That will be what we'll use. Please get a mic if you are going to be reading uh, during the sermon. I would encourage that the choir does that for me when the time comes. Galatians chapter 5. We need to pay attention seriously in this church. Pay attention to details. It's a very good thing. I'm not going to be here always. I want you to understand that the time is getting close. That I'm not going to be here every Sunday. Most of the things that I do, we should have like three, four, five people that can do the same thing. I pray that God will help us in the name of Jesus. Galatians chapter 5. We are going to read just two verses 16, 17, and 18. And this will serve as the cornerstone for the word of today. 16, 17, and 18. If you're there, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. All right, let us read. So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. For the sinful nature, desired what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature they are in conflict with each other so that you do not do what you want but if you are led by the spirit you are not underneath the law somebody shout hallelujah let us have a seat before god please i want you to bear with me today I am doing like five million things at the same time, but our God is one. Today's word tells us, if you look at your screen, says, what influences you? And sometimes that word can be who, it can be a person. What is that that influences you? Um, the side men, the ushers, please sit down. Amen, somebody. Amen. Is this your name that influences you to do many things? Because some people is their name. When their name is Shino, they want to become a gate man. Because the name said they need to open doors. Are you with me? Is it the flesh? That influences what you do and how you do things? Is it the spirit? When I mean the spirit, I'm talking about the spirit of God, not any other spirit. Amen? Amen. Is it the terrestrial matters? Things that you can see, you can feel, you can touch. Is that what directs your affairs? Or is it the spiritual things that direct your affairs? Some people ask fear as their motivator. Whenever they are in fear, they misbehave, they do a lot of things. Is it fear that is ruling you or faith? Today, we are going to look at all of this. But before we go into the test, Second Chronicles ends with Cyrus the king of Persia asking those that are 
taken as captivity, who wants to volunteer to go back to Jerusalem? Because it wants them to go back and fulfill some purpose, which is some of the things that they, God wants them to do. He wants them to go back and build the temple that has been in the room. He wants them to go back and make sacrifice to their God. This is God touching Cyrus for this. And so, Zerubbabel, which was made the governor, and Joshua, the high priest. This is not the Joshua that we know. This is not the Joshua that led the history like some people usually think is the same person. No. So we have Zerubbabel, which is the governor, and Joshua, the high priest, went with over 42,000 people back to Israel. When they got back to Israel, they began to build. And this is where I'm going. While they were walking, opposition rise up. You know, like if, you, if somebody takes you out of your land, and that land becomes desolate, the neighboring towns or city will take charge of what is and would ruin it more or take those things that are supposed to be useful for you when you come back, they will use it. So when they came back, they had nothing. And these neighboring cities begin to terrorize them. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And because there were struggle, because there were fights, because they felt God cannot handle the situation, they now begin to find ways around it. That is what led us to the verse of today. And one of the ways that they did was to start to intermarry with the pagans. At least maybe if I marry from your city, you will see me as your king's man. And then you might not want to have do anything to me. Maybe if I marry from that, I'll be part of your king's men, and then you will not be able to do me harm. I pray that God will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Until the time that Darius the king now made an announcement that no one should hinder the growth of that temple. I pray that no one will hinder your growth in the name of Jesus. Amen. But you know, I'm trying to get us to understand why we had the lesson. So Zerubbabel the governor was the one that started with 42,000 and over the years we now add extra extra add people in the presence of the king and now extra is given the privilege to not only go back but this time around extra is going back with the levites and he's not going back alone he's going back with so much gift that the king has given to them to be able to beautify the realms, you know, you've just built a temple back, put this artifacts there, put this gold there, make it better. May God do great things for us in the name of Jesus. Amen. So that takes us to the lesson of today. Ezra is the leader of the second group and he left Persia to Jerusalem. Ezra is a priest, Ezra is a scribe, Ezra understands the law of Moses. So when Ezra got there, let us look at the first lesson that we read. The book of Ezra chapter 9. I want somebody to read gently verse 1 and 2. After these things yes. had been done, yes. the leader came to me and said, Okay, hold on. For us to know those things that we had done, I want you to read from verse number um, Ezra 8, read from verse number 33. And read through tonight so that they will know what was done uh-huh on the fourth day yes in the house of god please listen uh-huh we weighed out the silver and gold yes and the sacred articles into the hands of Nehemoth. this was the things that extra brought extra brought silver gold sacred articles and now is handing it over to the priest uh-huh son of Uri uriah yes the priest yes Eliza, son of Phineas. Finispa yes was with him yes and so were the levite uh-huh josabad yes. son of jeshu yes and new new dear uh-huh son of binu yes everything was accounted for by the numbers and weight everything was accounted for by the number and by weight uh-huh and the entire weight was recorded at that time uh-huh 
Then the exiles who had returned from captivity. This five, is the second group that came with Esther, which are the Levites and Esther. Now they sacrifice a uh-huh. Sacrifice burnt offerings to the God of Israel. Yes. Twelve bulls for all Israel. Now let us go to nine verse one. Uh huh. After these things had been done, which means after they have accounted for all that they brought, after the sacrifice has been made, now these things happen. Uh huh. The leader came to me and said, "Yes, the people of Israel, uh-huh. including the priests, including the priests. Can you underline that in your word? Including the priests, uh huh, and the Levites, and the Levites have not kept themselves separate from the neighboring peoples, uh huh, with their detest- detestable practices. Yes, like those of the Canaanites. Yes, Aitites. Yes, Prezites. Yes, Jeb- Jeb- Jebusites. I want Jebunia, the Jebusites. Uh huh." Ammonites, yes, Moabites, yes, Egyptians, yes, and Amorites. Uh huh. They have taken some of their daughters, uh huh, as wives for themselves, yes, and their sons, and have mingled the holy race with the peoples around them, yes. And the leader and officials have led the way in this unfaithfulness. Somebody shout, Hallelujah! Sit down, God bless you. By the time, look at it, I want you to understand this because it's something that is needed for today Zerubbabel was there Esther came after like 58 years between the time that Zerubbabel was there and the time that Esther got there things has gotten worse they thought by intermarrying and the people that started it did you see the people that started it they were the priests and the Levites that started it those that are supposed to be the yastic those that are supposed to be the people that the church the congregation the the people of fellowship should look at those are the ones that started it they are the ones that started the intermarriage now but i want you to look at it some of you will say uh, is god mad at intermarrying other people that do god told them that in deuteronomy in exodus but that wasn't the issue because even Moses married a strange woman. Ruth, that our Lord Jesus Christ came from, was not from Israel. Do we understand? But then, what actually happened is this. When they were marrying, they were not marrying to change or convert those that they are marrying. They were marrying so that they can have the life that they want. So they were marrying on condition. Condition that I have peace, but you can do whatever that you want to do. And so those conditions made those women to bring with them the abominations that is not supposed to be brought. They brought their idols with them. They brought every fresh things with them and began to convert their husband into doing many of these things. Somebody shout hallelujah. So those that are the remnant, I call them remnant because most of the time when you put groups together, the good ones are always small in numbers. The bad ones are the ones that people know, people see. They are the vibrant ones. They are the ones that jump around. They are the ones that you see their names everywhere. May God help us in the name of Jesus. Am I speaking to somebody? So now, the intermarriage that they thought should help them, make sure that those people that are attacking their farms, that they are attacking their products, that when they want to get anything, you know, what they do then is when they plant, and by the time of harvest, you have the Amorites, the Ammonites, the Jebus, the Jebu people, and the Ondo people. They will just drive by, and they would take all their harvest. So now they thought peace should come from intermarrying. And then peace did not come from intermarrying. What is coming from intermarrying is the wrath of God. I hope this is speaking to somebody. I'm going to tell you we do the same thing these days. We will have issues. Everyone has their own issues. Everyone has their challenges. Everyone has their struggles. 
even the man that will come to the shepherd in Christ has his own challenges too. Everyone has something. But the issue is many people when they are going through their challenges begin to seek help from people that they are not supposed to seek help from. Just because they thought that is where the help should come from. Just because you've been looking for an husband, I need a husband, I need a husband, I need a husband. And God is not doing it at the right time. Some people will, because of that, go and marry anybody that they see. And once you do that, that means you are yielding yourself to that person. And that means that person dictates the relationship. And when that person dictates the relationship, what happens? If the person, you, I tell you, some people will say, oh, uh, oh, my mates are marrying. And so they will look for one guy that they know has so many attributes, wonderful attributes, smokes, you know, fights. If you may let my Google, then they, they will say, holy oh, sure, I found somebody who just pray with me that the Lord will change. I tell such people, God does not do that. You have to pick somebody that you know that you are suited with. Somebody that you have tried and you have seen to be above the mediocre level that you, have, that you are used to. And that is the, some, the person that you're supposed to be with. But then, many of us, even when somebody's looking for a job and you find that dream job and get into that dream job, the MD is saying, you know what? You have to put your back down to get this wonderful job. But because of money, because of finances, because you have seen that person as the only one that can fulfill that, and then you do that, then let me tell you, what are you going to do to keep that job? You have to put your back down all the way. This is what happened to Israel. Many of us, when we go through some things and you've been praying to God and you feel like God is not answering, then you would call one Baba at home. That is the time that you want to remember that there's a fetish man in your hometown that is so odd that has done something when you were young. That thing that that person did for you when you were young, that you are still suffering about it today. Because sometimes when we go to all those people and they say they were helping us and they put marks, that marks would help you with that thing. But that mask will mark you for the devil to be able to come in and go at any time that he wants. Is somebody with me? I hope I'm not stepping on anybody's toes. And if I step, shout hallelujah. I like you. God bless you in the name of Jesus. God told them, do not get yoked with unbelievers. Are you listening? Do not get yoked with unbelievers. It is not that they cannot intermarry. Like I said, many people intermarry. But those that they marry were those that have given themselves to the God of this child completely. They have yielded to that God. They don't have any other gods. And the funniest part is this. The priest and the Levite were the ones that started it. And that comes to today. Fathers. Today is Father's Day, right? If you are a father, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. If you are a father, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Every all the all the all the mothers in the house are saying they are fathers i don't know how that happened though as as america happened to you <laughs> i want you to listen to this if you are a father you have a big role to play many of you that are growing up in ranks now Elder brother, elder sister, keep elder, keep leader, 
leader, senior leader, superior leader, superintendent leader. In fact, I don't even know what rank is going to come again because every year, like every two, two years, we have one special rank that is coming. Fathers has a very big role. Are you listening? If you are a father and you are lying, and you are a mother, you are lying. I bet your children will grow up and become master liars. No, children do things better than their father and their mother. Unless if that child is not a true, a true son of the poor soil. Am I lying? For many of you that people will be knocking at the door, you will look at it and you will see, oh, it's Sister Judith. Tell her that I am not around. And then the child will say, Mom is not around. Then one day, he does something and then you ask. And then he gives you a reply and says, why are you lying? Ah, ah. Mommy taught me. And your daddy taught me. It is Father's Day. Somebody shout hallelujah. Everything that our children learn, they learn it from the fathers, the mothers. But today is Father's Day. So we say they learn it from the fathers. Are very, women are very quick to call fathers. Somebody shout hallelujah. Is economy in your society making you do some wrong things in, in the hope to get the right result? Is the people around you making you do the wrong things in the hope to get the right result? Let me ask you, everything that people have asked you to do that is wrong, tell me one good result that you have gotten from it that lasts forever. One good result that you've gotten from it that lasts forever. Tell me one. That, that boyfriend that was yielded to you. I have a guy, you, this guy is good, this guy is nice. You just have to see him. And you saw him and that was it. Mm -hmm. At the end of it, what happened? Did he end up in marriage? Mm -hmm. I know, I know this, this prophet. Ah, very, very, very fiery. You know, fish on good. All the time that you've been going to that prophet, that he's been sending oil, sending soap, sending candle, and you've been lighting it. I bet most of the time the only thing you see is to like the to like the prophet or the prophetess more. Because that's what usually happens. They would include themselves into your prayer. Make themselves number one so that you keep giving. You become like a trailer that dumps that dumps sand. You will just come and be Show your money. May God help us in the name of Jesus. So, they now came to Esther and told Esther, look, we've done wrong. These women that were married has made the people of Israel to commit abominations. Those things that God said we shouldn't do, now they are doing it. I bet it, if it was myself or many of us here, that you came to a place and you are new and you want to do well and you see people doing wrong you just clap because that means you are the best and miss the best i want us to learn from esther that is something that is called corporate anointing somebody shout hallelujah, hallelujah. what this does is this it yokes a community together it yokes a church together it yokes a family together which means if one person is praying, it covers the family. If one person is fa fasting, it covers the family. But the thing is, when one person sins, it covers the family also. This is the case of Israel. Because when Ezra had, Ezra is not the one committing these sins. Ezra did not do anything wrong. But when he had, it is written that he tore his clothes and pulled his hair. And sat down and wept for the sin of Israel. Now, one, we believe in. Uh, you, somebody can read from verse 3 now. Ah, why are you looking at me as if it's not? That's only Buddha there, you will read too. Every Bible. 
Uh -huh. when, when I heard this, yes. I tore my tunic and yes. my cloak, uh -huh. pulled air from my head uh -huh. and beard, and yes. sat down appalled. Yes. Then everyone who trembled at the words of the God of Israel gathered around me yes. because of this unfaithfulness of the exile. Uh -huh. And I sat there appalled until the evening sacrifice. Somebody shout hallelujah. Many of us, that when somebody is falling in sin, let's hold the pillow. Like, open the gates for them. Lord Jesus, open the gates for them. Let them come in. Keep our minds from all anxiety. The waters will be no more. So we might be saved. Our faith in it. Come into the church. Tell them to come into the church. Our faith in it. Our faith in it. And we'll live. Keep hold of the heart. Tell them to come in. Come on in, come on in, everyone. Taste of His mercies, just a faith in the Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Can you look at the Father's Day and say, Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Thank you, thank you. God bless us. It is our day. May God bless us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Listen to me and listen very very good if you are somebody that is always happy when people fall into sin you are an elder brother and when your younger ones fall into sin and they are being whooped in the house you are saying yes 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 and please my dear take it away from her she's an elder let her go get it and what's the church people God bless you. Hello, you know, uh -uh. As beautiful as you are, somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Many people in the church, I want you to listen to this and listen to it. Many people in the church. We rejoice when people fall. We rejoice maybe when people fall into temptation. Maybe somebody lost something. We rejoice. We need to learn from Esther. Corporate anointing does not give room to that. I'm telling you, if you are in a house and you have a husband, and because your husband did wrong, and then you get mad. You get mad and you feel your angel has done something. And then the, the husband is falling and you are rejoicing. You see, it's going to come back to you because it's a corporate anointing. People don't understand that underneath the same umbrella, which is the canopy of God, we are yoked together as a family. And that's the reason that when you see somebody falling into sin, the first thing you need to do is go down on your feet and pray for that person. Pray with that person. Don't say, uh, you see, I, I've told her. She used to sleep around. I told her she's going to, she's going to happen. And now that it has happened, eh? God, God has cash him. Or God has cash her. That same God is your God. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Extra knew that if the punishment for what they have done should come from God, that punishment will not spare extra. I told us one um, watch night service here. Jeremiah got mad because of what people were doing to him. And then he told God to bring punishment on the city. And when the punishment came, he was the first one to complain to God. Why should I suffer? For the iniquity of others. And God's answer is this. Is, are you not part of that city? For you that love to pray for people and ask that they should fall or maybe because you don't like them they step on your feet and you just want you just wish that something happened to them forget it's a corporate anointing may god help us in the name of jesus somebody shout hallelujah am i speaking to somebody here 
Esther was not like those priests and those Levites. He knew that if he had, because Esther can just declare, he's the leader now, he can just declare, get all of them and go and kill them like Moses would do. Take them out. Let us start afresh. But he knew that that would not erase the sin. What can erase the sin is a change of mind and a change of thinking. May God help us change for good in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you look at the prayer of Esther, you would think he's the one that went into sin. Anybody that see from verse number 6. Or you can start from 5. Do we have a Bible? Do we have a mic? Oh yeah. Then at the evening, yes. sacrifice, yes. I rose from my self abasement uh -huh. with my tonic and clock yes. on uh -huh. and fell on my knees. Yes. And my hands spread out to the Lord my God yes. and prayed. Yes. Oh my God, yes. I am too ashamed and disgraced. Who committed sin? The people. Mm -hmm. But this is Esther, right? Yes, sir. I am too ashamed. Can you pray that prayer because somebody has committed sin? Many of us, what do we do? We say, a lot more. I'll be back up. We would, we would rejoice. Uh huh. Oh my God, I am too ashamed and disgraced to lift up my face to you. Yes. My God. Yes. Because of our sins. Uh huh. Because our sins are higher than our heads. Uh huh. And our guilt has reached to the heavens. Yes. From the days of our forefathers until now, yes, our guilt has been great. Very great, uh huh. Because of our sins, yes, we and our kings and our priests have been subjected to the sword, uh huh, and captivity, yes, to pillage and humiliation, uh huh, at the hand of foreign. We will never kings. be humiliated in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Sit down. God, God bless you. God bless you. God will bless all of us in the name of Jesus. I want you to become like Esther. You have to recognize that sin is sin and sin has a serious consequences i want you to take yourself as a leader of a team even when you're in the church for those that are into the military or that has many people under them that they report to an higher authority if your team mess up they are not going to go to any of those team members they are going to come to you the church is a team the church is a family if one person messes up that means everyone has messed up until we have that mentality that is when we can move the church that is when that can be fulfilled until we get there that is when this church can cleanse the world but as long as we are seeing myself as better than everyone you are not better than me you are low i am high i'm telling you it will always be a circle may god help us in the name of jesus Amen. somebody shout hallelujah sin has serious consequences not only for the person but for those that looked away for those that never helped for those that never prayed for those that have never tried to fix things, it's a great consequences. And I pray that that will never be a portion in the name of Jesus. Are you with me? You have to know this. That even being around the wrong group can hurt you. For many of us, I would say, and they would say, ah, you know your friend does it, your friend does it. You say, ah, it's my friend, do, do he does all of that too, but eh. He does his thing, I do my thing. She does her thing, I do my thing. Corporate anointing. You have to choose your friends wisely. Choose your group wisely. Choose your gang wisely. Choose your family wisely. May God help us in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. So what do we need? Let us go to the second Bible reading. I don't want to take much of our time because we have Inyon Amala Begiri and all, all things waiting and I don't want it to, to be cold. 
No, we don't microwave in young. He has to come out as hard. We want to learn what differentiates extra from other priests and the Levites. As a leader, what do you think can differentiate you, can make you outstanding from others? What do you think can help you in a way that you can change your community for good? I want somebody to read the second Bible reading, 1 John chapter 5, read from verse 1. Everyone who believes that yes. Jesus is the Christ, uh -huh. born of God, yes. and everyone who believes the Father loves his child as well, this is how we know that we love the children of God, yes. by loving God yes. and carrying out his commandments. Uh -huh. In fact, this is love for God, yes. to keep his commandments. Yes. And his commandments are not burdensome, mm -hmm. for everyone born of God overcomes the world. I want you, if you have a pen or you have a highlighter, highlight verse number four. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. Uh huh. This is the victory that has overcome the world. Uh huh. Even our faith. Yes. Who is it that overcomes the world? Who is that person that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. See that God bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want us to look at this and we are going to look at it briefly so that we can have understanding. The issue with the people of old is that they depend on themselves for help. They depend on the five senses. It depends on something that they can touch, something that they can hear, what they feel, what they taste, all of that. But Extra did not depend on any of that. Extra dependency was on who? God. If you want to do well on this earth, I'm going to give you an example. If somebody owns a house and you rent the house from the person, what do you call that person? Because the is the owner. If you believe that Jesus is your Lord and personal Savior here, shout hallelujah. So, if Jesus is your Lord, who is your owner? Are we getting somewhere? If you call somebody a landlord because they own the house, that is why you put Lord to it, the owner. And you, myself, call Jesus our Lord. Who is supposed to be our owner? Who is supposed to direct your affairs? Who is directing your affairs? Ah, <laughs> most of us it is me myself and I that is directing our affairs until you yield everything to that person that you called your lord and let him channel your life let him channel your business let him channel your home let him channel your relationship that is when corporate anointing will work for you that is the only time and that is why I ask, who influences you? What influences you? Is it your Lord? And if, I, if you say yes, then who is that your Lord? Because your Lord can be your flesh. Your Lord can be money. Your Lord can be economic situation. Some people's Lord is their car. They say, my baby, my baby, my baby. Even if a need to fly, fly over it, they get mad. Don't you know they don't care for God as much as they care for that car? Some people's husband is their Lord, some people's wife is their Lord, some people's pastor is their Lord, priest. Many things that they cannot do for their husband in the house, they will do it for the pastor. They cannot kneel down to greet their husband in the morning, but daddy, daddy, daddy. Before you know it, every, every, up, down, up, down, up, down. Something that they cannot do for their husband. Some people cannot stay with their husband for five minutes, but they can kneel down in front of the shepherd or pastor for 30 minutes. He will be talking, they will, be need, they will, need, they will not even shake. They will say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Papa, yes, Papa, yes, Daddy, yes, Papa, yes, Daddy. And we have forgotten 
that charity begins with at home. If you lose that corporate anointing in your house, you cannot get it in the church. Are you listening? For you that you can do as you like, anyhow, think, who is your Lord? Even within ourselves, we can tell. Some people is already think he hates Jesus Christ. I know it's not Jesus, though. May God help us in the name of Jesus. Until you yield to the true Lord, the owner of heaven and heart, that is when we can actually be driven right. Because when Jesus influences your world, do you think anything negative will come out? If Jesus influences your living, do you think wrong living will come out? If Jesus influences the places that you go to, will they find you where they are not supposed to find you? I'm sure some people here, if they, if they say, they put a light detector down and say, just speak all that you do in the week. I bet they cannot say it all. On my post, the body becoming, I can't say, skip, skip, Abby, skip, 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 skip. Sometimes myself, I will skip too. Somebody shout, hallelujah. <laughs> eh? Because you are looking, okay, the, the, the shepherd is not an angel, he's a man. But God is helping, and God will continue to help in the name of Jesus. So all that we have to do is what? Yield to Jesus. That man went to Christ and said, how can I inherit the kingdom of God? And Christ told him, you have to be born again. It's as simple. You see, the word born again was used only at that time. Do you know when they, when they say born again, that means you have to become part of God's kingdom. How many of us is part of God's kingdom here? That you are a kingdom man, a kingdom woman, and you are sure be alone if Christ come today and the trumpet blow right now. It is absolutely true that you will be on the right hand of God. You are sure of it. Shout hallelujah. I bet it be. Huh? This is what we need to give to Christ. We need to just surrender. Let me tell you, nobody knows the time. Nobody knows the day. Nobody knows when. And the job starts from we fathers. In your home, you have to start it. Start it. Start making things right. Make things right with your wife. Make things right with your children. Make things right with your neighbor. Make things right in the church. Make things right with your creator first. Coco Boria, tell it that is for now. Change to your God first. And then you can change to others. Many of us, every promise that we made before coming to America, we have thrown it out. All the things that we told God we would do. We have thrown it out of the window. Now we are doing our own thing. And then we expect that this God will direct your affairs. If you have, at your, many of us are leaders at our place of work. If you have somebody at your place of work, that every time you tell the person, go right, it's always going left. If you have a room to fire someone at a place of work, who will you fire? That person, right? Now think God. Think of God as the owner. Think of God as the person. You know God can hire and fire at any time. Some people are already fired. They are still attending church. They are just adding to the numbers. They are not kingdom men. They are not kingdom women. What come man? They are like, I call them signboard. They, the only time that they know they are select is when they wear white. Every other time, they don't even know they are a Christian. They at places, their words does not depict Christianity. Their act does not depict, their ways does not depict Christianity. Let me tell you, no one is perfect. Even the person that is speaking to you. But then the one thing that I've experienced in this my work is once you yield to God, God will begin to channel you. you, you the, I'm telling you some things that you used to do before, you will find it very hard to do anymore. I'm telling you, I am a witness. So many things that I used to do before, even now, it doesn't matter. So one of my sons saw me and saw some things happen. He said, holy show, you are a strong man. No? I said, I'm not strong. Jesus is strong. He's not like strong man. Because God has taken my mindset off all of that into some other things. Please, I beg you, let the corporate anointing we have here at Citizens Global, let it work for us. If you know you don't like it, I'm telling you, ask God to change you. And God will change you. Because we don't want to lose anybody. We will not lose anybody in the name of Jesus. May God bless us. 
May God be with us. May God make his face to shine upon us. And may God bring peace into all our lives. Let us rise on our feet. Please, if you don't have a candle, get your candle. Into my heart.